Ladies and gentlemen, we have something very special in store for you here today. A mind-blowing end-to-end mega park, but done in a way that we've never seen before. We have a whole universe story, four different civilizations living together, and we get to experience these different civilizations through the rides and attractions in their areas. We have storytelling dark rides. <laughs> Mad Max post-apocalyptic dune buggy racing events. Oh my God, would you look at that? This is actually incredible. Holy crap, no way. This is the best thing I've ever experienced in Planet Coaster history. What? <laughs> Futuristic gravity institutions. and a land of aliens that have invaded and they have a huge story of their own to tell and the creator has delivered that with their own pretty much movie. All of this together combines for one of the most unique park experiences you'll ever see on this show. It's going to be a ton of fun, and this is one you're not going to want to miss. So buckle up, keep your arms in at all times, and join me on today's episode of Park Spotlight. Hey, oh my planet coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. As mentioned, we're gonna be looking at Dire Paradise, created by one of our Discord builders, Sir Allen, and one of our patrons. This video is sponsored by my Patreon. If you guys do enjoy the content on the show, I would really appreciate your guys' support. Not only will you get your name added to the credits of the beginning and end of every video, but as you can see in Discord, we also have a VIP lounge with personal VIP announcements, monthly posts, monthly vlogs, but we've also introduced the priority submissions. And what you get to do here is submit your creation, and then we can upvote Vote what is going to be featured next. By being a patron, you get to help decide what content will be on the channel, and you'll also get to post your stuff here, and the community curates what they're most excited about next. And I will try to get to featuring all of these creations over the coming months. Chosen by the VIP members on Discord, you are seeing today's creation. Links to my Patreon are down in the description below. If you want to support the show, you like the content, it is greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. Back to the video. So once again, thank you to Sir Alan for supporting through the Patreon, and let's see what they have to say about their creation. This mysterious land accommodates four settlements, each with attractions that display the way they adapt to their environment and each other. It's a mega park with decent frame rates. Essential media, which we've all gotten. Each ride station features a poster with recommended settings and reshade settings. And here's a list of rides. We have a Mud Skipper, Mud Sludger, Dreadwood, Condor, Desert Storm, and Gravity Rush. So in fact, there are six unique rides in this park. And that's about it. They don't really say a lot more about their park. So I guess it's for us to figure it out on our own. Let's dive into it. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Dire Paradise end-to-end -end mega park. I don't know if it's a mega park considering how desolate it is, but it definitely stretches end to end. There's a lot of build parts and apparently six different attractions. So uh, it's mega in terms of scale, but would I call it a fully fledged theme park? <laughs> it's more like a desolate wasteland in the, in the swamps, I guess. But I love uh, wasteland themed stuff. I love Mad Max. I love Fallout. Um, I've have. I recently got into The Last of Us TV series. Episode two is out at the time of this recording, and I cannot wait for episode three. 
it's been a fun series so far. Um, Deadwood, Oasis, and Swamp Co. We're gonna go to the Swamp Co. I wanna see what's going on down here. But as you can see, there are coaster tracks just about everywhere you look. And I'm sure they're gonna have some pretty crazy top speeds. Oasis looks nuts. As I was getting the B-roll, it looks to me like there's some sort of dueling race between some post-apocalyptic trains or something. That's really freaking neat. Uh, I'm going to hold that one off for a little bit later and see what's on this side at this crazy oil rig. Speaking of oil rigs, we did feature Sir Alan's rig earlier this week. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend it. Um, it was absolutely amazing. Mud Sludger, do you really want me to go this way? Because this isn't actually a real path. Um, am I supposed to actually do this? Oh, weird. I think this is the queue. I have to like hop across this. Because there's no actual guests to the park, he can go ahead and design things slightly differently. If I understand that right. <laughs> that is correct. Well, that's a first. That is a first. So here's one of the uh, coasters. They said uh, there's like signs that I'm supposed to read. What does this say? Mud Sludger, 11 p.m. There's custom music, best with headphones, reshade off. Ah, screw it. Here you go. I'm going to go into my settings. We're going to change all my graphics so we can turn it off. There. Now the game looks like poop. Custom music. Now it has music. 11 p.m. Front bumper. There we go.
We made it out. What just happened? Good googly moogly. I did not expect any of that. Um. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. I got. I got so much I want to say, but I don't know. I don't know if it's over. We're we gonna have one final jump scare. Um. <laughs> I thought we were just going on a little boat ride. That turned to be like. That turned out to be like a 10-15 minute segment of this episode. <laughs> and if uh, if that's an indication on what the what, what's to expect from the rest of this park, we're definitely in for at least a full hour episode, I would imagine. Um, wow. The custom audio went really well with the pacing of the ride, absolutely. I definitely think you did that right. Uh, I'm gonna be brutally honest though, for me, the pacing was a little bit slow to get things going. A little lot a bit slow. Um, I don't know what this was set to before. 10 a.m.? We'll go back to 10 a.m. Yeah, it was, it was a little bit slow, the pacing, to get things going. And there's a saying that it's harder to say what you want to say with very few words possible. So if you're writing something, if you can convey exactly what you want to say in the fewest words possible, that takes more effort than going on rants. <laughs> and in the case of coasters, I think that also applies here, where I think you could tell your story with the fewest amount of track pieces possible. I think we could have gotten to some of those aspects a little bit sooner, a little bit faster. The buildup was like four minutes and then we started sloping down we're cruising through the canyons we're doing all this stuff we're seeing these creepy monsters at about the part where we see that mauled character is when things started to go and that was already like halfway through the ride i know you're trying to set the ambience and the tone but we're coming around the corner looking at the barge here that we just came from at a bit of a, a, a very slow rate so i think you could have sped that part up gotten straight to the action there the parts where we're actually traveling through the canals in, in a coaster track swooshing around was very much enjoyable and very fun and then when we got to that underground like fortress and they were killing those creatures and stuff that was also really cool and then we got a little bit more of that coaster track again so i think just cutting straight to it would have really helped a lot um i know that this you want to set the tone you want to set the ambience a little bit let me get my reshade back on Okay, I think it's not broken. <laughs> yeah, I just definitely think you could have sped that up a little bit because that was definitely a long segment. And at first, as what was going through my mind was, oh, I, ha I had set the bar very, very, very high with this. And after this ride, I'm going to have to lower my expectations <laughs> going forward. But then you kind of uh, made the uh, turn for the for the best, for the worst. I don't know. The, the ride got spooky and it started to, to get uh, pretty pretty enjoyable so it kind of made up for itself yeah i was i was like oh no <laughs> this, this is just a boat ride going around a mountain that's it um but yeah it, it definitely worked really well with your ambience your music and then you did end up telling a story and it did feel like an atmospheric dark ride this little barge this town this is like straight out of water world this is amazing so now now that we got the slow ride out of the way i suspect we're gonna have um some pretty crazy coasters going forward we have a little flat ride i don't know why we have flat rides when um there's no guests in the park i could turn that on and ride it but i'm okay um okay so we have mud mud exit is is this exiting swamp co or is it exiting the ride i don't know the way you made me get on that last ride i don't think there are any rules mud dried gobby eggs 
What is happening? <laughs> okay, uh, Mud Skipper. Mud Skipper. Did I? Oh, here's the queue. That's a cool sign. I really like that. What's going on here? The lighting seems weird to me. 10.30 a.m. 10.30 a.m. Front bumper. Moderate depth haze and fog. Ugh. Gentle green hue. I am not changing all my reshade settings. Do you know how much work that is? I have a setting called fog, I think. Yeah. How's this? Is this foggy enough for you? Moderate fog? Is that <laughs> moderate enough for you? <laughs> all right. So what do we have here? We have the uh, Starloop Power Up Coaster, 2,000 meters in length, seven inversions. There's custom audio. We're going to reload that. And front bumper, off we go. We're going with my moderate fog. <laughs> Turning it up a notch with the, uh, what was it, the mud trotter? <laughs> the mud skipper? <laughs> uh, I love the fact that when we hit those weeds, by the way, you, you, you tap the trim brakes just a little bit. I thought that was a nice subtle touch. Um, that was cool. That was really cool. See if I could fix my game. So in the future, if you're going to go heavy reshade and you want me to tweak and change everything, you can just provide me with videos of your, you know, your recordings of the, with your actual reshade settings. Because even if I try to adjust things to how I think they want them, reshade has a mind of its own and it behaves differently on everybody's computer. You know, they wanted fog, we added fog, but that's about the extent that I'm willing to go to in terms of uh, trying to tweak things to what I think that they want me to have it as. And some of these settings like adding a green hue, I don't even, haven't even done that before. And that might take some uh, finagling to get that right. And I still might not actually get it to the way that they wanted it to be. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of a, a tricky thing where I, I think if you just, so Tweaky Reshade can literally take hours and I, that's why I also don't want to really ruin my settings. Yeah, if, if there's certain reshade settings that you think are best, I just recommend to anyone submitting creations to uh, just provide videos with permission to use said videos. And then we should be fine. We should be good to go. That might just make it easier for everyone. We get to the ride, we throw up the video, and uh, it's exactly the way you intended it to be viewed but all that said if you make a good creation 
it should be good by default, right? Shouldn't require any drastic reshade settings or VFX or anything like that because Planet Coaster uh, generally does a good job of allowing you to make solid creations within the game itself. So there we go. That's the whole oil rig barge thingy, uh, water world area, a few flat rides over here, a long, spooky, dark ride, boat ride, and a crazy swamp monster coaster. A lot of content content on this side of the park that uh, I did not expect there us to be spending when i first look at the the b-roll and making the screenshots and taking a poke at the park i didn't expect us to be spending more than five ten minutes over here checking out this barge and riding a quick coaster boy was i wrong so with that uh pleasantly surprised at that we are in for a treat to see what these other areas have the bar has been set very very high and i'm super excited about the oasis this seems some like some mad max post-apocalyptic crazy uh what do you call it competitive racing simulator here we go so you can see here that this is some sort of off-roading track very good paint job by the way good good job doing the environmental details uh some real crazy rockets over here some jericho missiles what is all of this wow the forge is this a queue is this an exit I feel like it's an exit because there's no thingamajig. Just gonna keep going on. See what's what's going on here. Race registration. Okay, yeah, we should. Wait, what? You want me to cross this road? Is that safe? Are we getting in this car? That's so cool. So you want me to go this way? All right. Oh, make your way to the garage. Hello, I'd like to register that car over there. Thanks. People working in there. The one person in this park. You want me to go in, in here? All right. 3.40 p.m. It's very specific times. Seat one or two. Slight depth haze. I have a dusty. Let's try that out. All right. What do we have here? The Desert Storm Looping Shuttle SLV. Part of a coaster chain. Wow. 4,000 meters in length. Good googly moogly. And does the custom music here? It is. Yeah, see, there's Desert Storm Racer Wasp Bloodshot Hornet Violet. So I, did is that in your instructions? Oh, there's another thing here. Chain. Oh, I have to set the coaster chain. How do I do that? Ah, look at that. I knew something was terrible was going. All right, take two. God, would you look at that? This is actually incredible. Uh, what? thing I've ever experienced in Planet Coaster history. What? <laughs> I freaking love this. No freaking way. Okay, I'm gonna mute my mic and let you guys enjoy this.
freaking crap. <gasps> this is amazing. The sound effects are so good. Wow. I'm smiling ear to ear. I've never seen anything like this before. This is amazing. How are we supposed to catch up now? We gotta kick it into high gear. Come on, we got we got this. Come on. Start! Come on! Oh yeah. Alright. Now we're in business. Kicking into high gear, buddy. We got this. We can still win this. It's not over yet. Let's go! Is this happening? Are, are we going to... Are we going to play chicken? No way. Here he comes. freaking way Sir Allen standing ovation that was phenomenal Mad Max Mario go-kart let's go in planet coaster I cannot freaking believe that that was so well done I've always wanted to see something like this you made my dreams come true. I don't need to see any more of the park. Give the man a promotion. That was incredible. The fact that you had all these coasters like getting knocked off and rolling around with all the VFX. We're doing our little victory donut here. The crowd's cheering. Sound effects were immaculate. The, the amount of car revving, engine revving, and tire spinning sound effects that you would have had to put into an audio track is an immense, immense, immense amount of work. And uh, there's just nothing like it. The, the ricketiness of the coaster, it felt like we were in a car. That was an experience. Again, second standing ovation. That was phenomenal. Sir Alan, you made my Planet Coaster dreams come to life. And I think my reshade setting, you asked for fog, I put this dust thing on. I think that worked really well. I thought that was a, a really nice setting. In fact, I kind of want to walk around the park more with this. Um, it just really lends aid to what you've already done so well here with the dusty atmosphere. But uh, yeah, that was really incredible. Made up for that slow dark ride. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm only just teasing him about. I, I, I had my critiques on it and it was still an enjoyable experience. But that was next level stuff. Wow. What is this? Is this a, should we, should we take this across? Is there a sign? So am I supposed to read something? To the Citadel. Passport check. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Oh, past winners. Cool. Those are really awesome. Marty McFly one. Wow. Where's this begin and end? Okay, so you're, okay, so after the race registration, you're supposed to come up through here to Jimmy's rest stop and get some baguettes and some ribs. I don't know, want to know where those came from. Maybe the guy in the cave? This is so cool. I, I, I can hear the cars. I thought I turned the right off, but maybe not. I come across the bridge. Oh, there's another way down. There's some vending machines. Down here. And then we get our freaking passport. 
Oh wait, there's the pits? That'll loop you back around. And here's the passport check. And we're gonna take the gondolas to the Citadel. I don't know if I should turn the fog off for this, but I, I, I like it. Yeah, I kind of like this fog. This is really cool. Super atmospheric. Let's speed it up just a bit. That is the Citadel, I'd, I'd imagine. Yeah, now I'm fully immersed. I'm feeling this park spotlight. That Mad Max stuff was phenomenal. I better make sure that I turned it off before the next ride uh, so that there's no lag or anything like that. But there, if, wow. There's some more crazy stuff for us. As you can see, there's a coaster to the left, a coaster to the right, a Citadel up there. I don't know what's going on, but it's freaking cool as heck. So, buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I have turned the other ride off. We have arrived at what appears to be the Citadel. What things do they have in store for us here? Gonna do a nice treacherous climb. All the way. Nice vista here of the smoky desert background. And here we are. We have arrived. Viewing platform. I'm sure we could check that out. What is this? What? Whoa. We got some sort of dust machine? Okay. What's this? Gravity rush. Health verification scan. <laughs> That's amazing. I like the different civilizations. This is like more of the high-tech industry. We had almost like the uh, the nomads and their kind of uh, Mad Max way of living. We had the swamp people, and now we have all this. So this is crazy. A 3,000 meter coaster, three kilometers in length, nine inversions. Good googly moogly. It is the gravity rush. Do we have any rules and regulations for this one? What do we have here? 7.15 AM. I think this should be fine. Custom music, is it there? It is. And what was the seat? Rider's preference. I want to sit on the wing because it is a wing launch coaster. So that's what that's what my preference is.
again, amazing job with the the sound effects timed to the music and all that. Uh, I gotta show you guys something. I, I Because we had the gondola at two times speed, I originally started the ride at two times speed. And then I realized it's going too fast and something's wrong. However, after watching it at two times speed and then redoing it at regular speed, I almost actually thought the two times speed was better for what this ride, this ride is meant to like launch you out and do something crazy. So look at it here with two times speed. It, it's so vigorous, it's so insane, it's so fast and it's going and it's like rickety here and it's super loud. It almost feels like it works at two times speed where it's like, it's so fast that like there's no brakes, we're gonna die. And um, I almost thought like having a coaster where you intend it to be at two times speed might actually be a cool design. But coming out of the get-go like that, the gate, um, maybe here it's a little too much, but coming out of the gate with the sound going it almost felt like we were losing control. And I just wanted to share that with you guys because I, I, it, it was a happy accident where I was like, oh, that's kind of cool at two times speed. Uh, but then it start, starts to get a little bit out of control. Very interesting nonetheless. That was a, a really cool experience yet again. Sir Alan pulling out all the stops with this unique mega park. Wow. I really didn't know what to expect going into this park spotlight. You know, I could see the map. I could see that there's these big coasters and this giant wasteland, but I really didn't expect what we're experiencing and it's a pleasant surprise it took me for a spin and i yeah I'm, I'm i'm pleasantly surprised so apparently we have to go back from the citadel through the gondolas so i'm, I'm assuming now from here we have to head back to where we originally were here swamp coat and now we can go to the deadwood so i wonder if i could change my vfx for this i think this works it's a little bit of a swampy vibe here the deadwood so what it looks like without it oh we're still at nighttime but the 4 15 p.m actually kind of works here wow look at this building structure Ooh, it's, it's quite elegant look at that hand placed each one of these wood planks it's not going to protect you from the rain and uh all that but it looks cool definitely looks cool what do we got going on in here? A viewpoint? Yeah, so atmospheric. It's definitely like a reshade exclusive park. And I'm lucky that I do have some preset settings. They might not be Allen's, but they definitely work. This is very peaceful. The alien swamp people. When when you started when we I ugh, wow, words. I can't think. I'm <laughs> I'm kerfuffled. Uh, when you first think swamp people and swamp area, I expect just like twirly, gnarly, twiggly branches and gross, yucky stuff. That was more of the mud area that we experienced on that side. Whereas uh, this has actually got a little bit of elegancy to it and garden work. It's kind of neat. What does that say? I can't read that for the life of me. Oh, it's backwards. That would help. Deadwood. <laughs> 7.45 a.m. Okay, we're, we're not far off. It's just 30 minutes off. Wow, what a difference that makes. Guest facing, gentle depth haze with a green hue. I kind of have that going here. Just a little bit. Rotated or orbit. Can, let me see if I can actually do hue. Just to uh, yeah, see. I don't know how to do that. Okay, I think I got a green hue on here. I don't know if that's a good green hue or what, but it's a green hue. Guess facing rotated or orbit.
much more peaceful and serene atmosphere compared to what we're used to so far in this park and honestly nice change of tone from the fast-paced action that we've seen so far definitely a way to calm the nerves for what is possibly to come with uh whatever that coaster is over there really good atmosphere great details and again to my previous point where you come into the Swamplands, you don't really expect it to be this Zen garden like it is, created by what appears to be aliens. So really cool indeed. I'm gonna turn that green hue back off. It's driving me bananas. All right, well, let's see if we can make our way up to what appears to be uh, maybe the last coaster in this park, but you never really know. No, that, we go on that already? The Mud Skipper, that is the Mud Skipper. There's one over here though. So we must be intended to go through the gardens here. Oh, that's a cool walkway. Nicely constructed hand planks over top of the, uh-oh, over the pathing here. A home not forgotten. Uh-oh. Wow. What do we have here? Hmm. Some ancient alien stuff. Uh, pre-show?
Whoa, it abruptly ends right there. Sorry about the pixelation. That's just sort of uh, the resolution of the screens in Planet Coaster. Um, wow, that was really well done. So from what I take it, their planet overheated or got too hot or too close to the sun or something, and they were forced to eject and go somewhere else, which uh, ultimately they landed here from the looks of things. And apparently we have another... Looks like they learned how to play Valheim. <laughs> yeah, so they landed here. That's great. It's great storytelling, Alan. This is really well done. big fan of how you did that it looks to me like he has multiple screenshots with filters on them in photoshop and he's erasing the layers which is unveiling the next layer underneath and it looks like a speed belt it's super clever i've been kind of in awe on how he's done a lot of this because a lot of it has been still images some of it has been panning cameras within Planet Coaster itself, um, but they're all using that Adobe painterly filter on them. And uh, it's it's just really well constructed. This is really top-notch stuff, and uh, I might have to steal you in the future here, Alan, for some ideas of my own on a project we got going behind the scenes. Absolutely amazing. That was really well done. The pre-shows are even fantastic. Um, Sir Alan pulling out all the stops with the storytelling. As mentioned at the top of the video, he sets up about four civilizations living amongst each, o each other. You feel that a lot more heavily over here in the alien area because you've decided to go with these pre-shows. Wait, am I going backwards now? I think I am. Was, was it? Or, no, there's a third pre-show. Jeez. Well... Let's see what it has to say.
That is freaking amazing. So I guess by interacting with the alien, the tadpole evolved into a kraken. And now the uh, swamp has some problems. <laughs> or some friends, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> well done yet again, Sir Allen. Wow, incredible storytelling. I can't tell if I'm going forward or backwards or how many... This is like the never-ending pre-show. So the humans are getting wrecked by the uh, tadpoles, the invaders, I guess. Uh, so I guess the tadpoles protecting the land, from my understanding, from foreign invaders. Oh no. The humans don't stand a chance now. They're so happy about this. <laughs> we got you. They're holding the corpse. What are they doing? Oh, they hang them from the trees, right? Because that's what we saw in the, um, the river rapids to scare off invaders. I understand that right or they uh, make a monument So I guess they're paying respects. They didn't mean they didn't mean to do cause all this chaos to our planet. Hmm. Oh, it's not over. Okay, I, I can't tell if they're trying to pay respects or if they're using the human corpses as decorations. Oh my god. Uh, half of this episode is literally watching these videos. <laughs> Where does the story go from here? Well, it seems like your decorations have pissed off the, uh, native humans. But the Kraken is there to protect.
makes sense now. We saw the gobby eggs being sold at the uh, Swamp Co. And they're obviously harvesting, the, the Kraken has gotten out into the swamp. And that original dark ride where we saw the underground fortress, they're killing the monsters, taking their eggs, and they're selling them as fried eggs. <laughs> To the other townspeople in the uh, the different civilizations. Oh, so the aliens coming here has technically brought life to the swamp by breeding krakens, which has allowed life to flourish as they now have a food source. But it's kind of dark in the fact that they're eating all the krakens. <laughs> so I don't know if it's a a good or bad thing, but civilization is thriving as a result, so it mud-dried gobby eggs. Yeah, we saw those very early on in the episode. Oh, it makes so much sense now. That's actually really cool. What What I was just looking at early on didn't make much sense to me. But after seeing this this whole pre-show, the whole theme park is based around just the fact alone that these aliens have invaded. I still don't really know this the story behind the big um, corporation on the on the mountaintop there. But may maybe there's another pre-show. <laughs> oh, there's no ride. So all of this pre-show is literally just to tie the story all together, and there's no actual ride. Originally, I thought we were coming down here to experience a coaster. Looked to me as if there was one more coaster to ride up here. Apparently, the station's inside of the Condor. Did we, we didn't actually go in here, did we? Somehow I went up an exit. Wouldn't be a park spotlight without me doing that at least once. It's about the same. Okay, honestly, I kind of want to go back to my Dusty preset. I thought it worked really well. All right, this might actually be the uh, final coaster of the park. I will check the ride list after this. There might be another hidden surprise knowing that this park there probably is, but I wouldn't uh, set your expectations too high. This might just be it, but after a long, long, long pre-show like that to no ride, it's good that we still have one left over. So we're gonna uh, give this a go. What did they say here? Front bumper. Front bumper it is, and off we go.
Wow Freaking Wee, another amazing coaster to end off an amazing theme park. Let me double check the ride list and make sure we hit everything. I missed this drop forge. That's a big flat ride at the top of the uh, the racing yard. That's all of it. Holy good googly moogly. Look at this. <laughs> a dry, desolate wasteland. Who would have thought it could be so much fun? The hero for me, and this could have just... If you would have just made this racing ride and submitted that for Coaster Spotlight, I think that alone would have been cool enough. However, you've gone ahead and designed more and more of a world and a universe. There is a little bit of questions still be to be had. Like, I didn't quite understand what these scientists are doing up here. I know they're doing something with gravity. It did, wasn't really explained in the, the story or the, that pre-show that we watched how that civilization, you know, is so much more advanced than everything else. But we did learn through the aliens coming here, which is also a very unique atmosphere in of, of itself, their breeding of the krakens by touching the tadpoles have caused the swamplands to fill up with krakens, which we got, you know, what was a... Uh seem to be the, the the backstory of this ride it has no context until you've watched the pre-show later on so if we would have watched that first then maybe the the dark ride would have made slightly more sense but they're at war with the krakens down there and then they're also stealing their eggs then they've built up a civilization here to sell those eggs and we saw that little merchant stall here where they're they're all selling eggs and stuff makes sense why this is a thriving civilization maybe could have let guests in the park so that we see that here and then i guess as a as a side effect or this might have already been here from the beginning but now i guess they're thriving as well and they're sort of providing entertainment to the visitors coming to get food and then that that entertainment is through kind of like a mad max post-apocalyptic racing event and then you have the the super high-tech industry up here it really comes together with these kind of four unique worlds and stories i would like to know a little bit more of a pre-show or backstory for this civilization because it's, it's the one that ultimately i enjoyed the most and i want to know more about but i also think the environment and how they're building things and how they're constructing things and the race itself is somewhat uh, self-explanatory it kind of feels like you know this is the the Tatooine of Star Wars pod racers but in a, in a completely different setting and they people come here for entertainment and to uh, try their hand at racing so I don't really I think the environmental storytelling does it justice but with the amount of detail that you put into the pre-show with this um, maybe you could have had just one over here just giving us a quick something something and I definitely feel like there's a big question mark with this uh, you know gravity center I don't know what's really quite going on over here and what the back story for that is and after experience such you know, a long big backstory over here <clears throat> it's making me ask more questions um, and wanting to know more about this kind of back half of the park as we know a lot more about the front half but I guess you know we can we can kind of draw conclusions and and that's about it and i think that's good enough but wow as i mentioned throughout this video i did not expect i didn't know what to expect going into this park and i'm pleasantly surprised and actually quite uh set set in awe about what is experience what my experience is here i thought we were just going to be going on some coasters that were racing through some swamps that were racing through some canyons and we would have explored some stuff in between i, I had no idea that we were going to have a mad max like off-road derby thing going there i had no idea we're going to experience a backstory um, about aliens coming from another planet uh, and the civilization that grew through harvesting their eggs. I mean, this is just crazy. It really goes to show how much backstory, lore, and world building you can do with planet coaster through video screens and just artwork and how you present everything um the custom audio is really the the selling point here the custom audio on the, the the story on the cars on everything absolutely 10 out of 10 audio experience from sir alan here i guess maybe not 10 out of 10 i'd say 8 out of 10 the next thing you could have done to push it to the next level is have some narration at the points where i found that this dark ride the mud sludger to be boring it might have been 
nice to have somebody talking and telling us what is happening and that sort of thing. But, you know, that would be your, your next step in the future. Try to team up with Better Elegance or somebody like that or someone in the community that has experience with voice acting and, and then getting that syncing with rides. And then we wouldn't have to sit there watching screen after screen after screen of a like a, an endless, you know, video, uh, video visual only story. If we're digesting bits and pieces of that story throughout the rides building up to this, then we can have more of it pieced together so that you have less of it to present all at once, if that makes sense. So I think there's different ways to present the story and deliver the story, and you can spread that out throughout the whole experience overall, and then it would all come together at the end naturally from going from experience to experience. So presentation-wise, delivery-wise, I think that can be improved in the future, but I can't deny the overall package and experience was a one-of-a-kind, unique experience like nothing ever before that I've seen in Planet Coaster, and for that reason, I had a really good time with this park spotlight here today i hope you guys did as well if you did leave your comments down below if you want to give this a download for yourself check it out links are down in the description if you enjoyed the video and liked it in any way please do give it a like subscribe and share it with your friends on social media and that is going to do it for us in today's episode of park spotlight thank you all so much for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and i'll see you all in the next video bye now